So this is the piece that I love, you know, about the work that Bright Minds Processing mm -hmm. and that Suman is doing, you know, in terms of, of finding the unusual, right? Because you can have your eyes, they're either 20-20 or they're not, and then we got the glasses, etc. But Absolutely. then there's some, there's another level Absolutely. that this works into that isn't quite as well known, mm -hmm. right? And you yeah. were diagnosed with it. I mean, you didn't even, like, like you, you're I just the perfect know. example. Yeah, right? I was 25 years old okay. and my parents took me to eye doctors year after year you know cranked up the prescription uh -huh. and i was able to see clearly but you know there was something else that was missing that hasn't been picked up and it, it wasn't picked up um until i went into optometry school <laughs> yeah interesting interesting okay so so you went through it too uh that's absolutely great and tell me in terms of your practice do you work primarily with children? Do you work with adults as well? What's what's the makeup of your practice? Yeah, I would say mostly pediatrics. Okay. Um, but adults can have vision problems as well. Um, but in addition, in, kind of in summary of what type of patients I see, it's a lot of uh, adults and children with amblyopia. Okay. So amblyopia is a medical term for lazy eye. Okay. Um, I also see uh, patients with binocular vision disorder, like convergence excess, mm -hmm. um, visual processing disorder, um, also post-concussion. So patients that have right. been in a car accident or suffered from a stroke mm -hmm. and now their ability to use their eyes and their vision is all mumble jumbled up and we have to reteach the brain how to use their eyes effectively. Exactly. And going back to what we said before, it's not so much because there's something wrong with the eye but there's something wrong with the way that the brain is processing that image. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I, how I speak to patients about it is, you know, there's really four components to an eye exam, right? So we have, you know, the eyesight part, you okay. right? Are we 20-20? Um, if we're not, is there glasses or contacts that can help fix, you know, the eyesight mm -hmm. so that the patient sees 20-20? So that's one checkbox. And the second checkbox is your eye health. So, you know, like I said earlier about how we can pick up diabetes and high blood pressure just by looking in the back of the eye, that's also a very crucial component. So that's checkbox number two. And checkbox number three is what developmental optometrists like myself look into. Uh, and I like to break it down. I like to kind of categorize that um, um, to be um, visual acquisition skills, mm, right? Like so how is the information coming into the brain? So that's, you know, assuming that it's 20-20 eyesight, so the eye, the, it's clear out of each eye, but how are the eyes focusing? Is that 20-20 sustained at distance and near and everything in between? Okay. How are the eyes pointing at each other when it's reading, right? Are they both pointed at the same exact spot when they're reading? Mm -hmm. And then number three is eye tracking. So now that, you know, it is pointing at the right spot, is it tracking word by word, line by line, smoothly and efficiently? So okay. that's visual acquisition and visual processing is once everything is going into the brain properly, what is the brain doing with that information? Okay. So um, there's a whole slew of testing that you know, isn't done at a regular optometrist or an ophthalmologist office because they're only checking the first two boxes, which is eyesight and eye health. Right. Great point. Great point. When people find you or parents bring their kids to you, do they actually know that something's going on or is there some other behavior issue that they're dealing with? That they, how do they find you and how do they even know? that they require what it is that you need because one of the things that's fascinating mm -hmm. in the world of, of bright minds processing and what we're trying to do really in mm -hmm. terms of getting the word out there is that there's a lot of issues that are happening you know with kids not doing well in school you know etc i you know i don't want to put words in your mouth i want to i want to mm -hmm. hear about your experience but there is this unknown that there is, hey, there is something going on here that we don't know about. And yeah. so tell, tell us, you know, how, how do people find you? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and this is why I love, you know, what Sue is doing with Bright Minds Processing, because it's really bringing awareness to an area of optometry that is, you know, so needed in, in, in the world, in, in children's lives and, and how um, they're comprehending and progressing through school. Um, you're right. A lot of times if the child isn't complaining, this could be missed. 
and they're adults and then you know they're kind of pigeonholed into professions that don't necessarily require excellent visual skills so in terms of how I um, uh, how I get these patients you know parents will bring these children in to see me because they see that they are having headaches when reading mm. right they have eye strain so they're reading for five minutes and all of a sudden they don't want to read anymore so you know they could be uh, misdiagnosed with ADD or ADHD right. because you know by not wanting to read for more than five minutes they're misdiagnosed with having an attention issue right um, these kids could also have poor eye hand coordination mm -hmm. they might not want to play sports okay. um, you know and, and there are going to be kids and, and people that you know, are not as inclined to sports but if there is an issue with eye hand coordination or how the both eyes work together as a team the child is not going to trust the information coming through the eyes mm -hmm. and you know would pick something else other than sports to, to, to be their hobby. Right. Um, there's also going to be kids that struggle in school. That's another sign, right? So they've been through reading tutors, speech therapists, occupational therapists, and, you know, they, they've done, you know, spends a lot of money. The parents have spent a lot of money on, you know, additional help and, and, and they're still not progressing academically, mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as they should be. And, you know, their, their grades are slipping and, you know, they're reading below grade level. And there's so many stories. I, I just got an email this weekend from a mom that, you know, finished uh, 20 sessions of vision therapy her child did. And, you know, she successively um, went from third grade to fourth grade. Um, and she's no longer having headaches when reading. And she's just gained so much more confidence, not only in the classroom, but in her life. So. Uh, these are the type of stories that I love hearing because um, we're able to provide that missing piece to the learning puzzle right. for them. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, we have to kind of rely a lot on, on what the child complains about mm -hmm. um, to pick these things up because, like I said, a lot of things can be kind of missed and, and swept under the rug, especially if the kid doesn't complain. So we have to be proactive in looking for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I live through that, you know, and you know with with my son mm -hmm. exactly that i mean good kid great in school but coming home tired etc and it wasn't until i started actually doing this work dr murray was actually here when i was interviewing her yeah my son was operating the cameras oh no and way. then we started talking about you know we need like plus eight and plus seven i mean because we're like oh, wow. like you know yeah yeah our eyes aren't the best in the world yeah. and then she said why don't you come over and mm -hmm. within the first session they started talking, etc., and she just made some recommendations. And immediately, I mean, my son was no longer tired, no longer um, experiencing these these challenging moments in school. Mm -hmm. And essentially, her recommendation was stop taking notes. Mm. I mean, this is not something that you're going to hear from a counselor or a teacher, etc., right? Yeah. Because kids have to. But he has great, uh, you know, auditory processing yeah. skills superb memory mm -hmm. and then the, the the writing and the reading and etc was just like really it just wasn't working for him yeah so son stops taking notes in class grades go up you know uh, cl classwork attitude towards school yeah. super improved and uh and no longer tired or having these headaches or or you know coming over and, and, and sleeping in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah no absolutely like learning there's so many senses that come into learning right to so the right. learning puzzle there's the auditory system there's the visual system there's the tactile system and oftentimes if you know a child has a very strong auditory system that can kind of mask issues yes. visually yeah. um, so like my goal is to okay how can i give as many tools for the child to succeed mm -hmm. right because what if there's a situation where you know auditory, he can't you know activate the auditory part um, to understand material? He now he has to rely on the vision side, right? Right. So what can we do to bolster vision as much as we can? Um, but that's that's a great story. Yeah, it's, there's yeah. so many pieces to, to the learning puzzle. Yeah. And that's, yeah. yeah. And and I wanted to ask. I mean, if you had a magic wand in terms of mm. what could happen to kids in schools, early diagnosis. What would that look like? Because this is what we're yeah. striving for re really here, mm -hmm. right? In terms of it's like, okay, we know, you know, about 20%, 20 I mean, one in five kids, one in four kids yeah. has these issues going on. And they're mm -hmm. going 
undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that a very high percentage of the kids that get going into getting into real trouble, etc., have you know great minds, <clears throat> great, but an inability to interact with the world. Etc. Yeah. And if we had a, a, if you had a magic wand, and we can say, okay, this is the way we could mm -hmm. like make these slight shifts, and all of a sudden, you know, we we find these kids early. Yeah. What would that be? Yeah, I love I love what you said about vision and you know accessing the world. Like one of my favorite quotes is, "Vision is the brain's way of touching the world," and wow. it, it was a quote by Merlo Ponty. Uh -huh. And um, it's it's so crucial when you tag it with the statistic of eighty percent of learning happens through the visual system. Okay. Right. You can't learn with your eyes closed. Right. At least not effectively. Sure. Like there's audio books, etc. But you know there's such untapped um, territory there when it comes to children struggling with mm -hmm. academics. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I had a magic wand, I would like for all children to get a functional slash developmental eye exam before the diagnosis of ADD or ADHD, dyslexia, and any other type of learning disability is mm -hmm. made. Um, because far too many kids are misdiagnosed or overdiagnosed with these conditions um, and they haven't had their vision system assessed mm -hmm. you know, in, in the proper way in terms of visual acquisition and visual processing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying these conditions don't exist, right? ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, and other learning disabilities exist, and there are great um, resources and accommodations for those um, conditions. But like we're talking about here, um, so many um, vision, visual-related learning issues can complicate and mimic symptoms and signs of, of these um, conditions, ADD, ADHD, and mm -hmm. learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. So it really behooves us, really any educator, anyone with a child that is struggling with school, mm -hmm. um, to, to understand that fact and really you know, look into it. What can we do you know, at a legislative level to you know, really you know, um, save legislative dollars, right? I mean, there's a lot of money being spent you know, in, in areas that um, are not, you know, focused on vision. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, vision is the area that needs, you know, most addressing or auditory or, right. or other types of... Okay. Yeah. Wow, fascinating. And the beauty is that you have the numbers to back it up. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. I, I, I like... What, what's your success rate? Um, it's, it's very close to 100%. I mean, we pick... Um, obviously not everyone needs vision therapy. I want to put right. that out there, right. Right? right? Like if a patient comes into my exam room and we don't find a need for it, we're not going to recommend vision therapy. So, so, so the people that, you know, need it and, and they c go through our program, um, it's essentially 100%. I mean, we tell patients that it's all about compliance, mm -hmm. you know, and doing the home exercises. So if you follow those two rules, um, your, your child is going to get better. You know, the, uh, the adult that is struggling with using their eyes are going to improve and um, um, be managed um, through vision therapy. Great, great. Is there anything else that you'd like to add or anything that you want to share? Yeah, I mean, um, I think there's a misconception that um, there's not enough research that backs up what developmental optometrists do. Um, and that's completely false. There's actually a lot of good research out there um, showing that, you know, uh, eye tracking skills um, have a direct correlation with reading comprehension in, in children that are in second to third grade. Um, there are very strong NIH studies um, for convergence insufficiency that prove that vision therapy is the primary mode of treatment for um, convergence insufficiency. Um, the research is out there, um, especially um, in the realm of lazy eye or amblyopia. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of new research that came out this year um, that shows dicoptic techniques, mm -hmm. which is what something is that? that dicoptic techniques is um, a vision therapy procedure where um, you wear red-green glasses. Okay. So one eye sees one target and the 
the other eye sees a, a background okay. and it basically enforces both eyes to work together um, at, at the optimum level um, and that has been shown to be as effective if not more effective than patching alone okay. right so you I know, went through a lot of patching when yeah, I was a kid that's right yeah exactly yeah. so okay. you know and it's interesting did you know that uh, you know the patching studies that came out saying like oh if you have lazy eye patch for two hours a day or six hours a day that research came out 20 years ago <laughs> yeah. right yes. and um, we now have technology uh, with research um, that came out this year and last year that shows there are better ways of treating amblyopia so that's just one of the many conditions that we treat in the vision therapy room. Um, and there, uh, there are FDA approved you know, machines that address this um, okay. one, one thing that I'm thinking of in particular. Um, so the research is out there. I think we need to continue to spread the word and bring awareness to it because there's a lot of kids that need our help. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And our intent, or, or at least one of the visions that we have, is again to create these these case studies and, and mm -hmm. like a, in a documentary fashion yeah so that it, we can just sort of throw this out there and mm -hmm. really make it sort of mainstream yeah so so it's like oh ding 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 done yeah wow one out of five kids all of a sudden wonderful experience in school wonderful experience learning wonderful yeah. experience doing life yeah. that otherwise it's like uh, slippery slope Exactly. And one of my, the, my favorite things is like seeing kids gain confidence. Yeah. Oh. And it's, it's so Talk true. Talk a little bit about that like, it's, it's really good. Yeah. yeah, just like kids, you know, coming in, you know, for their first vision therapy session, they don't have very high self-esteem because unfortunately the school system makes it very apparent when you're not the fastest, you know, child in class to finish an exam or copy notes from the board, right? It, it's very clear, you know, who is the stronger student academically versus not. So this is a child that is already struggling um, and, you know, not being picked for sports teams and, you know, multiple things happening, you know, at school that, you know, they're just truly not interested in because they don't believe they're good enough. Right, and when we see them in therapy, we build these skills, they work with therapists on a one-on-one -on -one basis every week, they develop rapport, and they slowly gain confidence. And by the time they graduate, not only are you know, the, the skills improving, and we, we, know we assess skills from the moment they come in to you know, after they finish the program, and we're able to see statistically improvement, numerical data improve, you know, that's great and exciting, but what touches my heart and makes me mo ex most exciting is, you know, the, the, the kid that has, you know, um, graduated, you know, fourth grade class, you know, most improved in reading and, you know, finally, you know, loving sports, you know, joining the tennis team where they had no, you know, confidence before, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or even thought of joining, you know, a sports team and, it, you know, just you brighten up their lives and yeah. so many other facets of their life improve and it's not only the child it's also the parents that's doing homework with them yeah. right homework is not taking three hours anymore now it's taking the normal 15 minutes to 20 minutes and you're changing family dynamics which is amazing yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. great point and, and great point with that with it with a bicycle analogy yeah that was super we yeah we mm -hmm. didn't have that before so thanks Again, thank you. This is mm -hmm. great. You're wonderful for, for interviewing, you know? Thank you yeah, so much, yeah. Federico. Such a pleasure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah.